Hello, my name is Stephen Upton and in this short video I'm going to take you on a guided tour around the Plug Street Interpretation Centre. Plug Street is a small village in Belgium situated roughly halfway between Armentiers and Messines. This village was very well known to the British Army of the First World War and in fact my own grandfather when he first went into the trenches in June of 1915 it was very close to here. If you leave Armentiers going north on the road to Messines when you arrive at Plug Street you'll notice a very large British cemetery immediately up to the road on the left hand side. You can't miss it. There's two extremely large stone lions. When you get as far as the cemetery you've just passed it. So back up about 50 yards and on your left is a parking space at the side of the road if you're in a car. If you're in a motorhome or something larger then a hundred yards or so earlier there's a left turn takes you to a formal car park. This interpretation centre is very well signposted as you leave Armentiers so it's very hard to miss. Just look for the glass pyramid to the left hand side of the road behind the trees. Most of the interpretation centre is underground and as you can see as I approach it here I'm walking down a ramp and it's called the Plug Street 1418 Interpretation Centre and we enter through the automatic doors into a shop and reception area. Because I'm over 60 it only cost me four euros to get in. I think if you're younger under 60 it's about five euros so it's actually extremely good value for money. Notice in the corner the Commonwealth War Graves Commission there's a small iPad like device where you can search for graves. And on the wall there there's a brass relief of what would be an underground mining operation and that's how the British military would dig their mines. And this is some kind of piece of artwork made out of old artillery shells and barbed wire and a screw picket. There was an empty Coca-Cola machine and quite a bit of merchandise, much of it going to support the poppy appeal, I hope. As we enter the actual interpretation centre itself now, open the doors, immediately turn right, no that's left, move round to the right, here we go, and we come to a small cinema. There's films on in English or French, I don't know if they got them in German or other languages but certainly it was on in French when I was there. Nice big screen, lovely hard wooden benches to sit on but explaining all about the events that led up to why Plug Street became quite an important location in the First World War. Changed hands several times, the Germans arriving there in 1914 then the British pushed them back and the British occupied it for the majority of the war and in relationship to the First World War when we talk about the British we mean the British Commonwealth because Australian and New Zealand troops were based here at various times in the war and even for a very short period in 1918 some American troops. Now this exhibit was very good a huge table with graphics projected down onto it. It showed exactly what happened month by month and what it's showing there is an artillery barrage. Australian, New Zealand, British and Irish divisions on the left, the Germans on the right exchanging shells and Plug Street as you can see at the bottom there at this point was just behind the British front line. Those black lines represent the underground tunnels that were dug and there was something like 23 mines planted and on the 7th of June 1917 they were detonated. Unfortunately some of them didn't go off, there's about 19 of them went off and they've left huge craters in the landscape which you can still see today. 
and I have made a video filming some of those using a drone. But by detonating these huge mines under German strong points, it enabled us to push the Germans back off Messines Ridge. But this graphic display goes throughout the whole war and explains exactly what happened in the Plug Street area. Uh, as an incredible device you, to show you all about what took place. This is a small model of an underground bunker showing bunks in there, soldiers in there reading. Incredibly detailed. And this wall as well is a great example how using modern computer technology can help people understand what happened in a location. This wall is like a giant iPad. It's all touchscreen. You can change the languages and you can bring up all sorts of information and even rescale the text if your site's not so good. Make it large, make it bigger. And you could spend hours here going through the various pictures and videos. All on this wonderful touchscreen display. That's showing a watercolour of one of the mine craters. And then there's a miniature version of the big display that we saw earlier showing everything that took place during the course of the First World War in that area. It's interesting that they've called this an interpretation centre, not a visitor centre. Because it interprets the historical events of that period from about August-September time 1914 through till 1918 and that's showing you all the explosives packed underground at the end of a tunnel directly under the German front lines. One of those mines actually went off in 1951. Unfortunately they filled that crater and there's no sign of it today. There's still one of them directly beneath a farm. Still there today, tons of explosives underground underneath someone's farm. I wonder if that affects property prices. What we've just seen in this exhibit is body armour worn by German snipers. But you see the size of this video wall? Uh, quite incredible. It's in a screensaver mode there so they don't get any kind of burn on the screen. But the moment you touch it you can bring up all sorts of different information. You can play around with that all day long. We've got more videos over on this wall. You can't interact with these, these just play through various scenes. Showing Plug Street Wood. And just above you've got Saint Yvonne. That's actually where my grandfather first went into the trenches. Just north there where I'm pointing right now, that's where the British trenches were. And that's where my grandfather went into them in round about June 1915. You see the name as well there, Bruce Bairn's father. He was a lieutenant in the 1st Battalion, the Royal Warwicks. And my grandfather was in the 5th Battalion, Royal Warwicks. But Bruce Bairn's father was very famous as a cartoonist. And a lot of his cartoons were published at the time. And his fictitious character was called Old Bill which is a caricature of a British soldier. But Plug Street Wood became very well known to British soldiers. Stayed within British hands through most of the war, although in the German 1918 offensive, uh, they captured it and pushed us back. And we came back again in September and reacquired it. There's a number of static displays, lots of video displays. Now on my right hand side, which I'll turn around in a moment. Ah, now there's a Bruce Bairn's father cartoon. You can see the observation officer up in the chimney and the shell going down through the chimney stack. That's typical of Bruce Bairn's father's cartoons. And just in front of Plug Street Wood, there's a house still there today, but during the war it would have been shelled down to nothing. And the cellar was a dugout, and that's where he did a lot of his work. Now that shape in the wall is the shape of a British military cemetery headstone. And George Nichols was killed in action 
8th of June 1917. For that shape is exactly the shape of a British headstone, and every headstone represents a British soldier. Quite moving. Corporal Walter Stanley Dorr, February 1918 in Messines. Every headstone, of course, is not only a man, a soldier, but someone's son, possibly someone's husband or father. Uh, the cost of war. And the crosses are German ones. And here we have a German soldier. I'd like to encourage anyone who is interested in the First World War to visit this visitor centre. It's well worth spending even an hour or two there watching the videos, exploring the displays. If you'd like to know more about some of my videos, please go to YouTube and search for my channel by putting in Stephen Upton. Stephen spelt with a V. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it of interest.